Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today I got a review for you guys of the ProTech Malibu. Now this is the 20 CV variation. Let me see if I can get a focus in on that. It's the 20 CV iteration with the uh, really awesome reverse Tanto blade shape. I tried to show you guys the blade shape with the knife closed. That's just showing how this review is going to go. Um, these really nice aluminum handles as well. The black coated variation with the actual diamond texturing. Uh, this is what I would consider the like basic ProTech Malibu. Um, I feel like when most people think ProTech Malibu, this is the knife they think of. So really dope there. Uh, but I don't want to talk you guys zero off too, too much. Uh, I'd rather save that for the review. So now I'm just going to do a little bit of a size comparison before we get started. This is the Hogue Deca wearing the black aluminum OG goat scales. Really nice. Uh, this is a 940 Osborne. Uh, this is the, the knife that definitely makes the Protec Malibu look small, which by the way, the Protec Malibu is not that small. I would say it's a very like middle of the road uh, sized knife. So really works well for for all types of carry and all types of states i don't honestly know what the blade length is actually overall but it's really not a big knife i i couldn't imagine getting into any trouble over it but back to this we got that pm2 and that ad 20.5 now the uh, obviously the, the the pm2 is just bigger than both of these knives by by a fair amount so we're just gonna take that guy off but the 80 20.5 is only slightly bigger than the protect malibu and i would say this is an almost perfect sized knife at least for my hand it's small yet still big enough to fill my grip which is nice uh and then i feel like finally two knives that i just recently reviewed i shouldn't say just recently it's been a few months i'm not gonna lie my posting uh my posting has been very inconsistent but uh we're gonna try to fix that I'm gonna try to fix that but yeah both of these knives are just way bigger like it's just not even anything so we'll put those away and we will jump into this review and go over what i like and don't like about this knife and what i can recommend uh or rather what <laughs> or rather if i could recommend it for you guys um, and I will say this at the end of everything, I do also want to rate this knife on a scale of one to 10. I am allowing myself decimal points. Um, that'll be a new feature to the channel. If you guys absolutely hate it, you can let me know and I will never do it again. Um, what else? Uh, I'm going to be reviewing this knife next, by the way, just wanted to get that out of the way. <laughs> Because I don't want, I don't know when when it's perfect to say that. So yeah, the Savivi knives, Vision FG, my next review, boom. So for those of you that stuck around longer than my intro, you just got a sneak peek. But yes, starting us off, my favorite part of this knife is most definitely this blade, and specifically this blade shape. I find this reverse Tanto to be probably the best reverse Tanto I have in my collection. I don't know if I'm necessarily taking a shot at any knife in particular, but I will say I do like this one a fair amount more than any of my other reverse Tantos. Um, it is way, way more finer at the point. It is so much sharper at the edge than I feel like any of my other ones have. And it's not thin. This is not a thin blade socket. It's about the same as the 940. And it is not thin, but it comes down to such a paper thin edge. Honestly, a scary thin edge. You guys can kind of see it there. It is thin, thin, thin. I love that. Uh, I also love the 20 CV steel. That is one of my all time favorite steels. I absolutely love it. And while I'm back here, did you guys notice how to find the steel? I had to flip the knife like that and look at the spine. Yeah, all the writing is on the spine of the blade. You don't even know ex it exists. I mean, unless you're looking for it, but look at that. No writing on the blade, no build boarding, no nothing. That is awesome, you guys. Uh, the one thing I will say is I wish it said USA somewhere. This is a fully USA made knife, which is awesome. ProTech is a fully USA made knife uh company so i do love that uh obviously quality in other countries is not bad it's just you know 
USA definitely has de higher standards a a in some way, and I feel like this one's just made the American way. You know, it's it's a little bit of beef to it, but it's still very carryable. So, the American way, right? But <laughs> I'm making so many stupid jokes. Anyways, the the finish on the blade is a an awesome stone wash. Uh, I love the stone wash on this guy. That was such an awesome choice because I feel like this knife has an overall like fancier feel, but with this like this nice coating on the blade or not coating this nice finish rather on the blade and this really awesome texturing in the handle, you really feel like this is more of a user and a working knife, which I mean, that's, that's awesome. Not very many higher end knives like this can, can both feel elegant and hardworking. So that's, that's awesome. Uh, moving down just a little ways, I love the flipper tab. There is no way I cannot open this knife. It opens reliably every single time. If your finger comes in contact with this flipper tab, the knife's opening. That's just how it is. Uh, it's really nice. It's got a good amount of jimping on it, and it's angled just perfectly. It just gets my finger perfect every single time, no matter how I choose to open this guy. So that is awesome. Moving down to the actual handle itself, um, the grip is honestly really, really nice. It's more neutral. It's minimalist. It's, you know, it doesn't have a bunch of like cutouts where your fingers are supposed to go. No, it's just this one little hump and then everything else just kind of ridged out. And yeah, it's awesome. It, it feels nice, uh, yet simplistic. I wouldn't necessarily want to cut this, you know, cut with this all day and all night with like a thicker material like cardboard, but it's just fine, you know, for holding for like a couple minutes, cutting open stuff and then putting it down and whatever. So it's just fine grip. And again, it works in many different grips. You guys probably saw me doing that a second ago. Uh, yeah, like the reverse grip and obviously the, the everything like that is, is, is comfortable on this guy and definitely appreciated to be comfortable because with the minimalistic handle, you know, you expect that to be a, a thing that you can do. But the black coating on the handle looks awesome. It's a matte, but it's got this really nice almost texture to it. It's the first time I've ever felt aluminum handles that had texture. Uh, it, it makes it just super non-slip. Like, I don't feel like I'm going to lose this grip at all. And especially with this really nice diamond texturing all over the knife, this is like a perfect balance. Just like my, my OG goat scales here, this texturing looks sharp. It looks uncomfortable. It looks like, you know, it would be an irritation on the hand, but it's really not. It disappears. You don't even feel the coating. It's more just, you know, it, it's extra grit. And it's extra, you know, it's extra aesthetics, if that's something that you're into. With this guy, it's like, you don't really feel it, but it is working. It is, it is, you know, it's not so fine that it's going to be uncomfortable to the hand, but it's fine enough that it'll actually, like, work and do something. It's it's working, kind of jimping or, or texturing, whatever. But yeah, I definitely do like that a lot. Uh, and it's a deep carry pocket clip with recessed screws and a recessed clip. This is the perfect pocket clip. Uh, maybe not in this coloration. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But it is it is just one of the greatest pocket clips of all time. Protex pocket clips are insanely good. Definitely do like that. And of course, the action is insanely good fall shutty every single time and that is both thanks to the ball bearings that they chose to use and this amazing button lock system i would say protec is the king of button locks they just are you know most people would say you know we knives has really good button locks most people uh you know there's 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 a million different companies that use a million different button locks right even 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 Spyderco has dipped their toes uh, in the pool with the, the Spyderco smock. But there's a million different button locks, but I feel like none have been as as pivotal or as memorable as Protex. It is just so false shutty every time. It is so easy to actuate. There's little to no stick. On my, I do own another Protex. Uh, I had to know if... Um, if this one also had the action, and it most definitely does, 
In fact, it's even better. This one has no lock stick at all or button stick, whatever you want to call it. This is the Protec Mordax, by the way. I just recently bought this. It's a Blade HQ exclusive S45VN. But yeah, no, this guy is so nice. The actions that Protec have are just incredible. I keep talking about Protec as a company and their actions, but I can't help it, okay? It's really good. Uh, something that I noticed actually the other day carrying this guy, it only has hardware visible on that side, aside from obviously this guy here and, and the, the pivot, but you can honestly switch that around if you wanted to, but there's zero hardware down here. That is honestly a nice aesthetic choice that I really love, as well as the little like integrated backspacer here with the lanyard, uh, I guess, holes being down here instead of drilled through the handle, so it's not as much of an eyesore. I do appreciate them for doing that 100%. Um, but yeah, non-visible hardware is always nice. A nice little integrated backspacer, always nice. Uh, the weight is also incredible. This thing is so easy to carry. You almost forget it's even in your pocket with obviously the deep carry clip as well, um, which I actually noticed this the other day too, and I just reminded myself, they they untextured the portion that goes under the pocket clip. That is insane. I love, love that. That's such a good attention to detail. Uh, I really appreciate that though. But yeah, anyways, the weight is great. It's easy to carry, super EDCable knife. Um, that's pretty much what we're getting down to. It's a great knife. But with every great knife, there are still things that I don't like about it. And this one has just a couple. And so starting, there is a little bit of lock stick. It is not crazy. It's a little bit of, you know, it just takes a little click to get to get the button disengaged. Probably heard that first click. It's just something little. It's not really frustrating to me. I feel like knife snobs might be a little like, ooh, why is that a thing? But if you feel that way, buy the Mordax. Okay, I, I'm not I'm not saying the Mordax is better than the Malibu, but the Mordax has zero button lock or lock stick. It does have a button lock, but it doesn't have any lock stick. So if you want a knife that doesn't have button lock stick from Protec, get the Malibu or get the Mordax rabbit. The Malibu does have a little bit of lock stick, which doesn't bug me, but I know it bugs other people. So that's why it's something that I don't really like. I do wish that that was something that they could work out seeing as they did it on the Mordax. But moving on. <laughs> I don't necessarily love the coating on the blade in terms of wear. It's not going to wear very well. I've seen people with Protex that have been scratched to the gills. You couldn't even tell it was a black handled knife anymore. So that's just something that I'm not necessarily a big fan of. I just don't like when my knives show wear. Again, that's why I really love the blade finish, but unfortunately this handle is going to show wear really bad, which the pocket clip is going to be just as bad. Uh, the pocket clip, I love how they designed it and all that stuff, but it is coated. And bringing back the Mordax, I know I keep bringing the Mordax in now, but I have to show it too. Um, this guy's pocket clip looks like it's not coated, but it actually is. I've noticed that because it's starting to pick up a little bit of scratches and stuff. And I'm like, I looked really close and it looks like it's a coating. So this guy's also coated, but it's coated black. So it's so much more visible, but I'm like, this would have looked pretty good too on this kind of a knife and it wouldn't have shown wear as much. This guy just shows too much wear for me. It's just, I don't like that at all. That's why I, you know, even when I get my custom clips, I always get Chrome because this is just too much. It's too much to deal with, too much to, to hassle with. Uh, and at a certain point, you're just going to have a super reflective black clip, uh, which isn't a great thing. Um, aside from that, uh, the hardware is a little bit small. I believe the body screws are actually like T6s, which is insanely small. Not a big fan of that. I do wish that they would make their hardware bigger. Uh, T8s all round would be the most ideal. Uh, but yeah, guys, aside from that, I don't really have anything else that I'm not a big fan of with this knife. This knife is a home run for me. I mean, this knife was a knife that I wanted to pick up for the longest time and I'm very happy I did. Um, so diving into that, can I recommend it for you guys? Uh, absolutely. I mean, if this is a knife that you're like, I haven't owned a Protec yet and I don't want an automatic, this is the knife for you, 100%. If you want something a little bigger, something with maybe a slightly better action, 
You can go with the Mordax. The Mordax is great. Oops, sorry guys, I didn't mean to hit you. The Mordax is great, but it costs a little bit more. It's quite a bit bigger actually. So if you're looking for like a little bit of a size up, that one's maybe a little too big. It's more like two sizes up, but um, yeah, no, if you want something that's smaller, gentleman carry and has some flaws, but definitely stuff you can look through, this is so worth it. It's small, compact, user-friendly, a thousand percent, fidgety. That's something I didn't really talk about, but it is the fidgetiest knife I can think of. And it is just overall amazing. So with that, this is definitely a 9.1 out of 10 knife for me. Uh, it has its flaws. It definitely does. But all of them I can 100% look past because it's just a great knife. That could be bias as well. And I'm very sorry if it is. But anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Sorry, I'm kind of fumbling the bag right now on this, <laughs> on this outro. But... Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Please like and subscribe. Keep watching my content. I know I take big breaks, but I promise you guys I come back with quality. Uh, that is probably a lie. But yeah, thank you guys.